Is 2023 the best year in gaming? It's a sentence you've probably heard, and of course the argument can be made for if it's true or not, but it's obviously a subjective sentence. For someone who only plays competitive games, or let's say Nintendo-only games, as they only have a Nintendo Switch, this year of gaming has probably been subpar for them, as the biggest release for Nintendo has been Tears of the Kingdom, which is an incredibly well-made game, but outside of that, Nintendo's had more of a quiet year with remasters like Metroid Prime and Kirby's Return to Dreamland and Advance Wars, and then it's some niche franchise getting releases like Pikmin 4 and Fire Emblem Engage. And really, those are great games, but if you only play one company's games, you're still missing out on a lot of fantastic game and probably won't agree on this year being the best in gaming. As for someone like me who plays a wide variety of games and creates content from small indie games to big AAA releases, I like to think this could be the best year in gaming, especially for me. I was someone who only played Team Fortress 2 and Overwatch for almost 10 years, so I wasn't aware of how many great games got released in past years, but looking back, I feel not as many years can stack up with how many incredible games have been released this year alone. I'm going to break this video up into different categories with small indie games, big indie games, remasters and remakes, big AAA games, and games that haven't released yet as this video is getting made in September. Really, we're just going to look at all the games from every single category, and of course, I'm going to miss some games here and there, so please don't get upset at that. But I tried to find a good amount in each category to discuss to make the case for this year being the best year that we've ever had. Also, make sure you like and subscribe as it helps out the channel a lot, and let's get into it. First category we can get into is the smaller indie games that I feel may have missed a lot of people, but are still very good games, and I feel were generally well received. I'll say these are games that I have all played, and I'd suggest you try them as well. We have a lot of fantastic small roguelike games that released this year. Some into early access like Tape to Tape, which is a fun hockey game that reminds me of a classic arcade game, or a rail shooter that reminds me of Star Fox 64 with Whisker Squadron Survivor, where you follow a linear path and kill enemies. Then of course, we have the games that left early access like Have a Nice Death, Brotato, or Voidigo. I'd say Brotato could be considered a large indie game with how much success it has, but regardless, it's the best Horde Survivor game. Then we have Have a Nice Death that kind of looks like Hollow Knight, but has fun platforming and combat. And then Voidigo is a top-down shooter game that kind of reminds me of enter the gungeon which is one of my favorite games ever and of course not every small indie game had an early access period some games just flat out released out of nowhere like wall world which is a fun cozy roguelite that does have good story behind it and dlc we got 30xx and gravity circuit that are both fantastic mega man inspired games that play amazing with 30xx of course being a roguelite with meta progression and gravity circuit being a more single player with a handful of missions and we have a challenging card game with wild Frost that has some negative reviews, including one for me, but I can still appreciate how much work went into the game and how it's mainly just a user error, me sucking at the game. And we have an actual good creature catching game that isn't Pokemon that has good story with fun mechanics and cute graphics with Cassette Beast. And then finally, a cozy game like Terrano, which I'm not 100% sure where to put this. I think it's an indie game, but you can also play it on Netflix. But it's a fantastic cozy city building game where you actually restore the environment. And I know for a fact I missed a lot of indie games that are fantastic from this year. Every single day there's new indies coming out. But I feel like I covered a good amount. I've tried to cover the ones that I played. I can't really speak on indie games I've never played. But with how stacked the rest of these categories are, I feel like these are some games that definitely may have slipped by you and you should definitely check out. But next we have the big indie games. These are the big games that gained a lot of traction while still being, I'd say, an indie game. And I'm going to say this right now, Baldur's Gate 3, I don't really consider that an indie game. I'm not sure where some people would put it. I know it's an independent studio making the game, but they have like 400 employees, don't they? Baldur's Gate 3 will be discussed later. But this category is filled to the brim with more fantastic games that just immerse you in whatever universe you're in. We have games where you ride in a boat the entire time, collecting fish, artifacts, and uncovering some crazy leviathan monsters while saving the surrounding towns in Dredge. If we want to get crazier, you can dive into the water and help run a sushi restaurant with Dave the Diver, the game that keeps introducing new mechanics 25 hours into it. It's one of the best indie games I've ever seen. Or if you want a more cozy experience and want even more farming than Dave offers, you can go play Palia, which I'm unsure if it's an indie game, but this was the best spot to put it, I feel like. But it's a farming sim that's in beta that has received a lot of positive reviews, and I'm pretty sure this is also an MMO, which I've never seen a farming simulator MMO. But what if you don't feel like playing with other people, but still want that crazy cozy experience? You can go play Sea of Stars, one of the most highly rated games this year that has some of the most resplendent pixelated graphics with incredible music and fantastic story that could immerse you into the game for 25 to 30 hours of fun. 
definitely one of the best RPG games of this year. Or maybe you're feeling some wacky nostalgic fun where you miss some classic platforming and you load up Pizza Tower that looks like a classic Wario Land game with its levels, combat, movement, and music. A must pick up. Or maybe you want horrible platforming that would make you lose your mind and you load up Only Up, which isn't even available anymore on Steam. But the entire world of Twitch was consumed by this game where you just go up and up and up and then you fall and do it all again. This game spawned so many mods and made so many people lose their mind. It wasn't the best game nor a great game, but the memories you got mostly as a creator were some of the best memories you'll have this year. And you still wanna lose your mind, but now that you can't play only up, what do you do? Well, another big indie game that released this year was Darkest Dungeon 2, the sequel to the gothic turn-based RPG where you have a team of four goons going through different levels with different goals, eventually killing bosses. But the amount of strategy needed is insane with perks, afflictions, relationships, stress, health, different Different characters knowing different moves, having them in different move sets, just the crazy amount of builds you can do. Darkest Dungeon 2 is a very different game than the original, but it's still very hard and you might lose your mind a bit. Maybe you're not feeling a roguelite and want some more exploring like a Metroidvania, but upset Hollow Knight Silk Song isn't out. Well, Blasphemous 2 came out this year as well and is one of my favorite games of the year with its Souls-like combat and fantastic platforming, along with the incredible pacing of the game, making every weapon and ability feel very balanced and very good. Really, there's an indie game out there for everybody including those fps people that only play one game but they want to try something new but they only play shooters guess what we have a big indie game for you as well we have battle bit remastered you can have two teams of up to like 128 people battling it out in this chaotic game that's a callback to classic battlefield if you can get past those blocky graphics the gameplay is amazing all these bigger indie games this year have been incredible to see as every month we have new games to worry about and even the remaining of the year we have some indie games that look very promising but what if you're feeling a little extra nostalgic and you're not really feeling an indie game right now and you more so want a blast from the past well, this year has also been filled with a lot of good remasters and remakes. A lot of new players get to experience some of the highest rated games for the first time or allow veteran players to come back and re-experience the story again on newer hardware. This category may not have as much as others, but the quality of some of these remasters and remakes this year is insane. We have some strategy games that will get your brain moving like Advanced Wars and Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, both coming out this year. Two handheld games from the past coming to life, Ghost Trick originally being on the DS and released in the PlayStation 4, Switch, Steam, and Mobile, and then a great tactics game that got delayed a year with Advanced Wars 1 and 2. You get two games for the price of one. Both of these games were originally available on Nintendo handhelds, and Nintendo didn't stop there with remakes, as they remade Kirby's Return to Dreamland from the Wii and made it onto the Switch this year. And those are some of the best Kirby graphics we've ever seen. And guess what? Nintendo was not done there with remasters and remakes. They also remastered Metroid Prime, which was originally released on the GameCube and is one of the highest rated games of all time and guess what the remaster it's also one of the highest rated games this year and right there from nintendo alone that's a good little bunch of remakes and remasters that are all very good quality but there's still a lot more to go through and next we have two more remasters and remakes that were both very well received and made this year earlier in the year and one of them is my favorite games of all time after playing through it for the first time first we have dead space remastered that came out in january and introduced a lot of people including me to the dead space franchise and was an incredible sci-fi horror third person game that makes me want to try the second and third years to them being remastered as well but then we have another third person action horror game remade this year with resident evil 4 which is another game that gets appraised as one of the greatest games ever made and the remake is that to me and if you feel like going first person shooter old school with the remakes older than metroid prime you could play system shock which has a full-fledged remake of the hit game from 1994 sure some people don't count remakes or remasters when discussing the greatest years with gaming these remakes and remasters introduced a lot of new fantastic genres to a lot of new gamers and all the games discussed play fantastic and we still have one more big remake coming out this year with mario rpg which just looks stellar. I do believe it's just another set of games that helped cement 2023 as one of the best years in gaming. But then there's one more category that sets it apart from past years, I believe, and this is the biggest category, and it's triple A games released. And let me tell you, I feel this year has been absolutely stacked with them. There have been so many amazing triple A games to get released this year that the game of the year at the Game Awards is gonna be an exciting show as we ask what six games make that list. Well, of course, with how many exciting games that got released this year, there were still, of course, some hyped up games that really didn't deliver the experience we expected. The biggest flop being Redfall for me is that game was a disaster from Arcane Studios. What the 
the hell happened over there. But then we have a couple other games like Atomic Heart and Exo Primal that were good fun, but nothing really too special in the end. And then of course we have Immortals of Avium, which I thought was a pretty great time. It just didn't get the spotlight it deserved as some people had trouble running it and it was kind of poorly optimized, but I thought it was fun. But how do you get the spotlight from all the other humongous games released this year? We had two giant games with Star Wars Jedi Survivor and Hogwarts Legacy that started the year off pretty strong as Hogwarts Legacy got released in January. And despite some controversies and boycotting of the game, it reviewed well. I never played it because I don't really care about Harry Potter, but a lot of people said they enjoyed it. But then we have Star Wars Legacy, which came out in April and it was a buggy mess and not really optimized as well. But over the past six months, it looks like it's gotten a lot of patches to make the game run well, nice and smooth. Those two games started the year off very well, but another game to start this year off on a surprising note was the mystery game of Hi-Fi Rush by Tango Gameworks. It gets shadow dropped in January after an Xbox showcase and it plays amazing. A third person action hack and slash that was the first major surprise of the year. But of course you're not into those action games and want a more cozy RPG vibe. You have Octopath Traveler 2, which also released in February and was also very well reviewed. It's another game in my backlog. Maybe you don't have anything to play those games on and you only have a Nintendo Switch. Well, don't worry, Nintendo did release Fire Emblem Engage as well in January and I played that one and thought the gameplay was very well done. The voice acting was a little underwhelming for me, but the gameplay and story made up for it. And then of course we also had Forspoken come out in the beginning of the year, but we don't really need to talk about that game. Now if we fast forward a bit into the summer months and go to May, June, and July, it gets a little intense with all the games that are coming out in these three months as well for the big AAA releases. During these months, Nintendo delivered two incredible games, one being Game of the Year contender with Tears of the Kingdom. That game was so highly anticipated and when it released, it seems everyone was playing it and making funny creations and posting them on Twitter. Really, that game had so much creative freedom. And then in July, Nintendo released Pikmin 4, a niche franchise like Fire Emblem, but Pikmin 4 stood out. It was so cozy, relaxing, and had fantastic graphics for an eight-year-old Nintendo Switch, seven-year-old Nintendo Switch, and a lot of people agreed as a lot of people played it and enjoyed it. It took me about 30 hours to 100% and it was amazing. But of course, if you're not into Nintendo games or you don't have a Nintendo Switch, you missed out on these games. But if you use Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam, or you know, PC, you still had a lot of great games coming out in these three months as well. We got huge games like Diablo 4 from Blizzard, which is a very fun action online game that I still need to jump into more. We had Remnant 2, which was a Souls-like third-person shooter game made by Gunfire Games, which is another game on my backlog. And it also reminds me a lot of Eternal, which is one of my favorite roguelites out there. And then of course, we can't forget about Final Fantasy 16 finally releasing to high acclaim with its fantastic story, voice acting, and combat. A beefy 40-hour adventure before being able to go to New Game Plus, probably more hours, depending on how many side missions you do. And then lastly, we can't forget about the game I absolutely stink at releasing this summer to a 92 on Metacritic and it's Street Fighter 6. It just had a giant Evo tournament in Vegas and the fighting game community is loving Street Fighter 6. And even me, a casual fighting game fan, enjoyed the game a lot. I didn't get to play it a lot as it really hurt my hands trying to do all that button mashing and try to learn all these combos, but the time I had was great. Those three summer months, just like the beginning of the year, I felt had games for everybody from AAA, big indies, and small indie games just games everywhere but august and september i will say since this video is being made in september august and september they were also quite beefy with some great games august started off with the probable game of the year in Baldur's gate 3 i haven't played it but everyone says it's a perfect rpg and you can get hundreds upon hundreds of hours from this rpg masterpiece and then a few weeks later we get armored core 6 which was the highly anticipated mech fighting game created by from software you know the people that made elden ring and then after that we get another huge rpg game by bethesda in starfield which is one of my games of the year where you just have hundreds and hundreds of side quests and activities to do on on top of a pretty good main story. The rest of September, as of recording this, still has a lot of big games coming out. Some bigger games like Mortal Kombat 1, Lies of P, and Payday 3, all being released by the end of the month. Or if you're into those smaller indie games, we have Gunbrella coming out, a fun looking action adventure roguelike comes out September 13th. And then of course, we can't forget about Cyberpunk getting its 2.0 launch where they're rehauling like the entire game and releasing the Phantom Liberty DLC. September is a busy month. And then even looking past September, we still 
still have a lot of games coming out that I firmly believe will be pretty highly rated once they do release. Mostly October, we have Assassin's Creed Mirage, the best looking Assassin's Creed game since Black Flag. We have Super Mario Wonder and Spider-Man 2 both releasing on the 20th of October. And then a week later, we get City Skyline 2 on the 24th and Atlan Wake 2 on the 27th. And then of course, if you're a racing fan, Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 comes out on the 19th, which should be good fun. And then we also have our little indie game that we need to talk about, Wizard with a Gun, releasing the 13th of October. It looks like a pretty good little game, but October, another stacked month just right there. And I'll say November isn't as heavy hidden as October and December. I don't really have anything to talk about in December, but November does have a few games coming out. We do have a Robocop game coming out in early November, a first person shooter action game. You know, it looks pretty good. Maybe like an 82 on Metacritic, nothing too crazy. But then Nintendo's coming in with a new WarioWare game and the Super Mario RPG remake. So Nintendo's going to be carrying November. Oh, and then of course, if you're into shooters, we have our yearly Call of Duty game. Really, that's all I have to say. I do firmly believe that 2023 could go down as one of the greatest years in gaming, depending on how well these upcoming games score. Granted, even if some of them score bad, it's still going to be one of the greatest years in my opinion. Obviously, this matter is subjective, and this is what I think. I feel I made a good case, and if you don't agree with me, that's fine. I hope this video helped you find some new games to play, as this year has been stacked with incredible games everywhere. Even if you don't think it's the best year, you could agree it's been a great year for gaming, and I'm happy that I've been able to play so many games. Obviously, I missed a lot of games here and there in every single subject, so let me know some games I missed in the comments, and let me know what you think of this year in gaming thanks for watching an extra special shout out to the people that support me on patreon still your support really means the world and you help make these videos possible and if you ever want to watch live you can come hang out on twitch.tv burr we stream about five to seven days a week starting around 1 p.m eastern time sometimes earlier and yeah really that's all i'll see you next time